Central Asia and Afghanistan. I didn't say Afg between Central Asia and Afghanistan because Afghanistan is of course part of Central Asia and not a neighbor of Central Asia. But the interrelations between Afghanistan and the rest of Central Asia and neighboring countries, including, of course, the Caucasus, is a very important question. It's, we don't know. We can't predict the future. But if anyone can tell us what's possible and what's happening, it's our group of, of, of panelists this morning. We're going to begin with former foreign minister of Tajikistan, Zarifi, who served as ambassador in Washington very successfully and also very successfully in Tokyo. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, on, from the bottom of my heart, I would like to thank host country, representatives of host country for excellent organizing this meeting. Mr. Starr, recently said by an idea. He told me today gold area starts for countries of Kamka region. This brilliant idea, which I am fully supported, but today I would like to see to this idea from another angle through so agenda of today's of meeting. Because of title of our meeting, today have big symbol of question. What will be integration of Afghanistan to region of Kamka? I think if we are looking to present situation, without participation, integration of Afghanistan, to Kamka region never will be prosper and uh, luck, lucky in region of Kamka. How we can image if just one river, Amudarya, divided country of Tajiks from right side to left side. In right side of river lives Tajiks, in left side also Tajiks. In right side lives Uzbeks, in the, uh, left side is also Uzbek. And Turkmen's from one side and Turkmen's from another side. How we can live without integration economically, politically, trade and music without Afghan side, without people with the same mentality, same religion, same culture, same history. In this reason, I think, my idea which arises during the two decades is help and integrate Afghanistan to whole society, but first of all, for Central Asian country. Our relation, all countries of Central Asia with Afghanistan is natural. It hasn't any geopolitical, any, uh, any reasons. Just natural, we need stable, successful Afghanistan. As you know, in framework of several international organizations, financial, political organizations, during the two decades, discussed several issues about how to integrate Afghanistan to the uh, rest of the world. I have a list of a lot of projects for energy, transport, communications, and trade which was discussed, which was issued, but between wish and decisions and implementation, we have so far very big gap. Our obligation, obligation of society, obligation of governments of rest of the world, to narrow this gap between decisions and between uh, between decisions and implementations. For example, if we are looking to uh, energy projects, we have very good projects of TAPI, gas transportation from Turkmenistan through Afghanistan to Pakistan and India. But already a long time we discussed this project, 
still it's not implemented. Several projects also have very good, for example, uh, Casa Thousand or Casa Millennium, which allows from Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan supply energy to Afghanistan, Pakistan, and far away. It will be a lot of Afghan friends to develop economy, industry, and, and other structures in Afghanistan. And also, uh, trans, uh, transmission line between Turkmenistan and Afghanistan, also on the project, we will also discuss it, discuss it now. If we are looking to transport, transportation. You know, we have several railway projects which already have discussed and throw several expertise of the already issued a need to implementation. Because, for example, if from all Central Asian country and beyond will be transportation through Afghanistan, for example, from for my country, the closest road to Indian Ocean, it will be just through Afghanistan, if we are going uh, through Afghanistan to Indian Ocean. It will be for trade, for communication, the closest road, but it also for rest of Central Asian countries. Okay. Uh, what, what uh, finally, what I would like to say, this must idea which discussed in another frameworks. We should be from another angle, from our view, to implement and to shorten this gap which I mentioned before. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're now going to hear from Bakhtiar Mustafayev, who is head of the Institute of uh, uh, International and Regional Studies under the presidency of the Republic of Uzbekistan. Thank you. Dear Mr. Chairman, dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, let me express, first of all, my appreciation for the invitation and opportunity to speak at this very important international venue. In my speech, I would like to emphasize our strategic vision on the prospects of uh, the development of the situation in Afghanistan, which we consider as an integral part of our, of our region. It's obvious that the prospects of stable and sustainable development in Central Asia are connected with the achievement of peace in neighboring Afghanistan. It's impossible to talk about peaceful and prosperous Central Asia without solving the Afghan problem. We are pleased that at present there is a noticeable intensification of international efforts to resolve the conflict in Afghanistan Moreover, new positive trends are emerging on the issue of Afghan settlement, which gives some hope for the beginning of intra-Afghan talks. In addition, Uzbekistan also are ready to create all the necessary conditions for organizing direct talks between the government of Afghanistan and the Taliban in Uzbekistan at any stage of the, their development. I would like to emphasize that Tashkent coordinates all its actions in this direction with official Kabul, we remain committed to the fundamental principle, the political process to establish lasting peace in Afghanistan should be carried out only by the Afghans themselves and under the leadership of the Afghan people. Along with efforts to reconcile the parties, we also invest in the economic future, the social stability of Afghanistan and the younger generation of Afghans. I would like to highlight some of them, some of these projects. First, the construction of the railway, Mazar Sharif Herat, According to the preliminary data after the launch of the railway, the foreign trade turnover of the Afghanistan will increase by 50% and the project's volume of cargo transit in the first year of operation will be about 5, billion, 5 million tons, which are potential to increase 50 million tons a year in the future. With the launch of the railway, about 30,000 people will be provided with jobs. The annual income from transit will amount $400 million. The cost of the project is one point. $8 billion, 500 million of which Uzbekistan is ready to invest in Uzbekistan if Uzbekistan Railways is to be determined as a constructor. Today, an agreement has been reached with the Afghan side to prepare the feasibility study for the above mentioned railway on the use of 1.512 millimeter gauge for its construction. 
all the neighboring states of Afghanistan will actually receive the economic benefits of the project, the creation of the, this transport corridor with access to the Iranian ports of Chabahar and Bandar Abbas will allow South Asian countries to get the short access to the markets of Afghanistan, Central Asia, and Commonwealth independent states. The launch of this road will also promote the active use of the transit potential and capabilities of the port of infrastructure of Iran will give new dynamics to its relations with Central Asian states. In turn, the prospect of using the transit infrastructure of the Uzbek-Afghan corridor opens up possibility for Central Asian states to access the sea trade roads of the Indian Oceans. Secondly, the construction of the railway Mazar-e Sharif Kabul Peshawar. In December last year, the first meeting of heads of the railway administrations of Russia, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Kazakhstan, and Uzbekistan for the construction of the Mazar-e Sharif Kabul Peshawar railway was held in Tashkent. I am convinced that the implementation of the Mazar-e Sharif Kabul Peshawar railway project is also beneficial to all countries of the region. Thirdly, the development of cooperation in the field of energy. Uzbekistan is a reliable supplier of electricity to Afghanistan. Compared to 2002, the volume of electricity supplies from Uzbekistan to Afghanistan increased 30 times. At the same time, last year, Uzbekistan reduced the price of electricity supplied to Afghanistan by 35% from 7.6 cents to 5 cents. At the present time, we have begun construction of the Surkhan Polyhumri transmission line within the framework of the project Specials from Uzbekistan have already carried out decision and survey work in Balkh province. The next ones are planned soon in Samangan and Baglan provinces. Fourth, investing to the future of Afghanistan. In January last year, an educational center was opened in the city of Termez, the Republic of Uzbekistan, in which Afghan youth will be enrolled in two, four, and six-year full-time programs in 17 areas of higher education and 16 areas of secondary, special, and vocational education. Moreover, this year, Tashkent hosts a ministerial meeting of the Age Conference of Regional Economic Cooperation on Afghanistan, RECA. We expect that the main outcome of the forum will be the elaboration of the first strategy for the development of partnership of neighboring countries of Afghanistan for the common goals of peace and prosperity. Dear participants, in conclusion, I would like to emphasize that Uzbekistan will continue its practical assistance in creating the infrastructure of Afghanistan, considering this as an indispensable condition for promoting peace and prosperity in this country. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. We're now going to hear from Iskandar Akobayev, who is Executive Director of the Kazakhstan Council on International Relations in the city of North Sultan. Yes. And a Kamka fellow. Yes. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. My name is Iskandar, I'm coming from Kazakhstan. It's a great pleasure once again to be here. It's my second time in Tashkent, and uh, the, cha the city is changing very fast. So I hope it transfers the, the changes and uh, kind of reforms which are happening in Uzbekistan, and uh, it gives a new impulse, uh, positive impulse for the whole Central Asian region, including Afghanistan at the same time. So um, speaking about uh, investment and trade policies in Central Asia and Afghanistan, I would like to strength, uh, focus on the three uh, categories um, starting from the uh, global and geopolitical ones, so, and uh, coming to the regional and more to the local aspect. Uh, coming, speaking about the geopolitical and global aspect on the trade and investments, and where we put Afghanistan into the center, I think that the trade and po financial streams and the trade institutions are such, um, transforming in the same time. Uh, we see a new players, new asymmetric players, which are challenging the, the established system in the world, the China is rising and it's pro promoting its own policy, its own vision, Belt and Road, and uh, at the same time, it provides an alternative agenda for the Central Asian region. Speaking frankly, before, uh, if you if you if you say that five Central Asian about five Central Asian leaders, they were all only meeting, uh, kind of united by the they were before they were united by the kind of single agenda was a security issue. So now we're having a new agenda, which is about trade and, and connectivity. And Afghanistan is entering, is coming to the point where it's uh, high time to speak about uh, trade uh, opportunities with Afghanistan at the same time. Uh, for the mo for a long time, Central Asia was uh, one of the least connected regions in the world in terms of the economy, uh, transport, and logistics. Now there is a change, and there is a positive impulse. The most important uh, the most important thing how we're going to implement our ideas because in many cases we are good in in uh, creating ideas, but at the same time we uh, have a tendency to fail on implementation. 
So that's why I think it's going to be a long-term process and uh, we shouldn't overestimate what's happening now in the region, but at the same time underestimate the, 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 the new trends. So we should be kind of pragmatic and uh, approach to the uh, trade and investment policies uh, with Afghanistan and within Central Asia uh, with an open mind and, and uh, clear uh, vision. That's why it can help us to uh, kind of uh, implement pragmatic, clear, and uh, sustainable projects. Uh, speaking about the region, I think that, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of my speech, with the reforms in Uzbekistan, uh, Central Asia get, got uh, really, really good opportunity to speak about the regional connectivity. Uh, leaders of se five Central Asian countries are meeting. The first meeting was held in Astana, currently in Nur Sultan. The second meeting is going to be, uh, hopefully going to be held here. Uh, and it provides uh, positive signals to Afghanistan. So that is why I think uh, within this intra-regional kind of negotiation and consultation process which is happening now, I think that at least on the narrative and discourse-based level we can build up a uh, very important uh, kind of construction. But most important thing that brings people together, I think it's not mostly politics, it's, uh, it's about business. It's about re uh, daily business routines and it's about like small and medium scale aspect. So I think that one of the kind of glue and um, uh, bridging factors that can bring, uh, bring Afghans and, uh, to the Central Asia and Central Asia to the Afghanistan, it's about creating a real uh, kind of pragmatic, clear uh, roadmap for the investment policy. So uh, in many cases, when you speak with, a, for example, Kazakh investor, uh, and you ask about, would you like to invest into Afghanistan? They say, like, I don't know how to invest first. I don't know um, about the security situation there. And what's about politics there? So uh, in many cases, they don't know about much about Afghanistan. And I, I believe that in Afghanistan, people who would like to invest into Central Asia, they didn't, do not have much information how to invest into Central Asia, about, about policy, uh, customs, about uh, economics. So if you take into account that, for example, Kazakhstan is part of Eurasian Economic Union, uh, Uzbekistan is not, Kyrgyzstan is yes, Tajikistan is not, so we have kind of a different kind of model. So, but how to overcome those difficulties and bring uh, Afghanistan and Central Asia to the common ground in terms of the economy and trade policy? So that's why I think Kamka can create some kind of roadmap, real roadmap, uh, that can provide uh, real investors uh, with this knowledge to uh, kind of to do a real business. Thank so, you. Yeah. One wonders why Kazakh investors don't know when you've had a, an official trade representative in Kabul for more than a decade. Uh, our, our, ne our next presenter is, is Kamila Siddiqui from Kabul, who is CEO and founder of the Kawayan Group. Very happy that you're here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, esteemed host of the Kamak Regional Forum, respected speakers, and honor, uh, honored guests, good morning. Afghanistan is the first emerging as a trade and investment hub of the Central Asia region. Historically, Afghanistan has been a, a trade and connectivity hub and has, uh, has been uh, known as the heart of Asia for the, its a unique geographical location, which is able to connect South Asia to Central Asia and East Asia to West Asia. Sustained effort of the, has been made over the past year to promote regional connectivity and increase the trade volume between Afghanistan and regional country, countries through the launching air corridor with the India, Turkey, Kazakhstan, Saudi, uh, Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, and China. In the November 2018, the Afghanistan-China air corridor was launched uh, to increase the volume of the export uh, to China. <coughs> 2018 uh, <coughs> also uh, saw the launch of the Laps Lazoli Road has an air corridor with the Turkey on December 13, which is a uh, stop, uh, uh, enable Afghanistan to, um, to transport the product to Turkey as well as to Europe. In 2018, there was a 90% increase in the trade between Afghanistan and Uzbekistan, and positive trade trend, which is uh, private sector of Afghanistan will continue here as well. Trade at the, uh, at the center of the uh, national building and reconstruction effort of Afghanistan. 
by joining, of the, by joining the World Trade Organization as a 164 member of the state, Afghanistan sought to strengthen its uh, trade diplomacy. We believe that our membership uh, of WTO will force, uh, foster economic growth uh, through the increased uh, export and attraction of the foreign direct investment. Almost all trade uh, partners of Afghanistan at SARC, Central Asia, and uh, West Asia, either WTO member or are in the process of the accession. Therefore, <coughs> WTO membership gives Afghanistan broader chance for the increasing their uh, trade uh, volume. Our effort for promoting the economic through the private sector promotion and development of the trade are uh, exemplified by the uh, historical improvement uh, that has been made in Afghanistan doing business ranking. Afghanistan achieved as a, mi a milestone improvement in the, our doing uh, business ranking moved uh, move up from 83 to 167 in 2018. Afghanistan afforded a great uh, investment opportunity and first uh, mover uh, advantage for the investor in the several key sector. In the gemstone sector, it's uh, worth note that Afghanistan is now able to export semi-processed and process, uh, processed gemstone and uh, this is uh, present at the excellent opportunity for invest in, uh, in the gemstone process sector. Afghanistan is a, almost a small number of the country whose uh, natural resource and its the capacity of the product uh, emerge, uh, energy has, been, uh, remain, has remained uh, untouched. According to the research of the uh, research contact by NASA of the French uh, Geographical Survey, Afghanistan is not only rich in the local and the gold and uh, natural gas. Reserve, but also it's a rare uh, energy sources such as uh, neum, uh, tantalium, and also especially uranium, which has played a very important role in the energy product. Further, uh, Afghanistan has a great solar and uh, hydro energy product uh, potential. Information and communication, technology, finance, and uh, insurance, transport, construction, uh, and uh, extractive um, industry, some of the most dynamic sector, which is offer first uh, mover advantage for the investment in investor. Afghanistan has a great uh, source of the natural resource. We have the largest uh, unexplored uh, resource of the copper, iron, cobalt, uh, uh, cobalt, mercury, gold, lithium, and uh, thorium. It's uh, estimated to more than $1 trillion the site of this uh, deposit are open for international investors. The private sector of Afghanistan is growth like a never before and trade uh, to, um, uh, never before, before and traders or invest have a positive outlook for investment in Afghanistan. We are eager to promote uh, existing trade and investment uh, tie in the regional and uh, behind of the explored new area of economic cooperation where positive trade and investment are main drivers of the economic growth and over uh, stability, stability. The people uh, and government of Afghanistan, which are uh, with the help of um, the wider international community, are eager to rebuild our country and uh, emerge as a trade and investment hub of the region. Thank you. Thank you very much. All the cities of Afghanistan have lively and competent chambers of commerce. This is true in Mazar, Herat, Kandahar, and not just Kabul. But we're fortunate to have today the uh, a mem board member of the International Chamber of Commerce of Afghanistan from Kabul. He is also CEO of the CEFE Group International. Sir, Mr. Zayama. Thank you so much, Dr. Sir. <coughs> Sometimes it's good to be the last speaker. Seems we have got a plenty of time, but it depends how many minutes more you can give, Dr. Sir. I think it's good now, yeah? Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, dear panelists, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you all. I would like to uh, uh, start my points by raising two questions from the audience. I'm not expecting a long answer, but it's going to be a yes or no answer. 
the first question is that, have you ever considered nowadays that all around the world, and specifically in the CIS and in the Kamka region as well, the business itself has become the business of the politicians? And have you ever considered that new business leaders are coming up in order to lead the business of the politics around the world and in this CIS and the Kamka region as well? So taking this into consideration, there is a challenge in front of both categories of the politicians and the business people or the business leaders that they have to come up with a solution and resolve those challenges. The challenges are trade plus investments to bring in development. So if you don't have development, if you don't focus on development, we cannot have more trade, we cannot have more investments. In order to expect more trade and investments in the CIS region, in the Kamka region, in Afghanistan, so we need to focus more on the development policies in order to create more inter-regional connectivity, integration, and uh, 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 inter-regional uh, connectivity and regional integration projects. Uh, indeed, if you look at the world business in a bigger picture, the world is going toward the world business much. That each country is competing against each other, and the same competition has been started in the Kamka region and in the CIS region for the last past few years. As we can see, Uzbekistan is an open market right now. I used to do business with Uzbekistan for so many years as an investor and as a trader. And what I have realized in the past two years, a massive change and an immediate change. Not only about infrastructure and development projects and about the business opportunities, but as well as in the behavior and attitude of the people as well, which really is surprising me. For example, a few years back, when I used to come to the airport, the behavior and the, uh, the attitude of the policeman in the counter who was checking the passports was different from now. And nowadays, it's totally different. I tell you one practical example. When I came the other day, I've lost, I forgot my suitcase into the plane. And I came out of the terminal and I went back and I asked the policeman that I've forgot my suitcase in the cabin of the plane. He just told me that, please, sir, give me two minutes. I'm going to bring it to you. In three minutes, he has brought my suitcase and he said, this is yours. So it's see, we see a big change over here. So in this much, all the countries are competing against each other in order to get more foreign direct investments, to create more businesses, to do more trade, to create more jobs, and to achieve, at the end of the day, development in order to bring in prosperity and reduce poverty. So what has to be done in terms of the CIS region and in terms of the Kamka? While the competition is really tough, and none of these Kamka region countries are, are on the list of the leading FDI uh, countries. But still, this is an opportunity for the CIS region as well as for the Kamka region in order to team up together and to work hard for the shared aspirations and for the shared interest of the region and the countries. All these countries in the Kamka region, they have a campaign of invest in Tashkent. Invest in Afghanistan, invest in Kazakhstan, invest in Astana, invest in Almaty, invest in Baku. But there is a bigger question which has been re remained unanswered. The question is, why have to somebody has to invest in Tashkent? Why someone has to invest in Afghanistan? So we should have at least 10 or more reasons that why an investor has to come and invest in Afghanistan or in Tashkent or in Baku or in Ashgabat or any other cities in the Kamka region. I give you one of the examples from my experience in terms of attracting investors in order to come and invest in Afghanistan. Being a board member of the International Chamber of Commerce that we used to have meetings on a, a, a bi-monthly or each, every quarterly basis. Whenever I meet the big investors of the world, I call them and I attract them to come and invest in Afghanistan. So we have to attract the bigger investors in order to come and invest in the CIS region and then come and invest in the Kamka region. So we have to be together, and we have to share our interests and share our aspirations. And one of the examples which I faced like few years back when I was in Dubai, and I was attracting one of the investors from Qatar to come and invest in Afghanistan. I've given him an explanation of maybe 30 minutes that 
We have got mines, we have got minerals, we have got potentials, we have got human resources, we have got agriculture potentials. So after long discussions and conversations, he just asked me one question. And he asked me that why I should not invest in Paris, in Dubai, in Europe, in America, that I have to come and invest in Afghanistan? Give me that answer. And I didn't have that answer. So we have to have that answers. If you want the investors to come and invest in our cities, in our countries, we have to give them answers that we have to show them that we have got so many incentives that if you go to invest in Paris, you don't get the same. If you go to invest in Dubai, you don't get the same. If you, don't, if you go to invest in the US, you don't get the same. And for that one, our politicians and our business leaders has to be generous. We should not be stingy that, no, this is our resources, this is our countries, this is our cities. Now we are in the area of globalization and we have to share our interests and you have to consider the benefits and interests of those that were coming and investing in our countries. Uh, okay, if you look at the FDI also, as I said before, so none of these countries are the leading, except Kazakhstan is in a good position, Azerbaijan and Georgia in a better position, but unfortunately, Afghanistan has lost the opportunity to attract foreign direct investment at least for the last past few years. And if you look at the model of trade between these two countries, as I said that we need more, we need better policies and sufficient policies in order to create regional interconnectivity and regional integration. And if you look at the balance of the trade between these the CIS countries and the Kamka regions, we see that we have got different models of the trade between these countries. We have got a model of good size balance trade, for example, between Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan, which is around 1.4 to 1.5 billion export and import. And if you look at the unbalanced model, again, if we look at the trade model of Turkmenistan, Af uh, Uzbekistan, and Afghanistan and Uzbekistan, it is a sort of unbalanced model of uh, trade which we have on the ground. More exports, less imports from country to country. And if we uh, look, the third model is a small size uh, model of trade between the countries, which is Uzbekistan and Tajikistan, which is a very small one. And there is a minimal as well, for example, between Afghanistan and Mongolia, or Afghanistan and Armenia, or Afghanistan with the uh, uh, other countries in, in the Kamka region. So one of the policies has to be drafted in a way that this trade has to be balanced between these countries. Imagine that if each of these Kamka countries have to have a trade balance of five to $10 billion between each other. What is gonna happen in this region? It's gonna be booming and a boost over here in, in, in this uh, part. Thank you so much for your attention. Although I've got so many other interesting points, but uh, I would be looking forward if there's any question. I'll be- There, there will be, and you'll have a chance. Thank and you the, so much. Uh, floor is Thank open first. I wonder if any of you would like to ask questions of each other. No? Okay. The floor is open. Well, I'll begin. Uh, we've talked about Afghanistan as a recipient of investments, but you have serious, uh, serious people in the business world in Afghanistan. Where are you investing besides Afghanistan? Myself. Okay, it's a good question. Actually, uh, as we had a very short discussion yesterday, Dr. Solso, me, as an Afghan entrepreneur, I have started our business back in 2004. You don't believe it, I have started with $300. And now we are grow, glow, uh, growing globally. We are having investments and projects in Afghanistan, in the Middle East, in Africa, in Turkey, in Uzbekistan. In the US also we have got an operational office, but not a practical investments. And we have already started investing in Uzbekistan for the last two years. We already have two running projects over here in Uzbekistan. But anywhere else in uh, other Central Asian countries? No. In, this, in the CIS region, we have no, started... I don't mean the CIS region as a whole. I mean the other five Central Asian countries. None of them. None Why of them. not? We, we, we do business with Turkmenistan, because, but Turkmenistan is a close country. It's not easy to, easy to invest. Uzbekistan was the same. Two years back. So basically the reason business. is they're hard to invest in. Exactly. This is one of the challenges. There is no good reason to invest in those countries. And if Uzbekistan, we used to do business with Uzbekistan for the last five, six years. Well, we've started to invest for the last two years. And still, we're not too much safe. We're not feeling too much uh, safe. Because still the legal frameworks and the 
policies has to be changed in order to give more incentive for the investors. I give you one of the examples in terms of the legal uh, policies. For example, nowadays, if you enter to Uzbekistan and invest in any of the projects, one of the conditions that Uzbek government is putting in your contract, that if there is any dispute arising out of your contract, that has to be resolved in the Uzbekistan courts, that people do not trust Uzbekistan courts. And they, they don't feel safe in order to resolve their disputes against the government into the Uzbek courts. So this has to be changed, and we have discussed this one in the okay. previous we as well. Can we ask Bakhtiar Mustafaev to, to respond to that question? My colleague uh, mentioned rightly that the last two years we have many uh, conduct many uh, large-scale reforms, especially in economic sphere. So uh, after the liberalization of our economic system, uh, we are open to cooperate, mm -hmm. not only with Afghanistan, with other uh, foreign states. Good. Everything is clear, yes. Yes, sir. I have rather, as a scholar, I have rather a um, terminological question um, related to the designation of Afghanistan as a Central Asian or South Asian country. Um, since recently, we very often hear that Afghanistan is a part of Central Asia. And uh, scholars, uh, experts provide a number of arguments for such designation. Um, so uh, my question can be addressed to anyone from the panel who can answer. Um, what is the principal difference of uh, uh, Afghanistan being the part of South Asia and being the part of Central Asia? To my mind, or my impression from a study of this phenomenon, or in teaching even the regionalism course for many years, uh, in many aspects, uh, like from uh, territorial peculiarities of Afghanistan, historical background, cultural affinity, cross-border trade, I think Afghanistan has more ties, more connections to Pakistan and India, South Asian countries than uh, Central Asian, including statistical information which reflect trade. So that's why for me uh, it is so important and uh, interesting uh, why there is such a shift in our perception of Afghanistan from a uh, South Asian perspective to Central Asian, especially uh, taking into account of uh, incompleteness of Central Asia's own regionalism. Yep. There are many debates about whether Central Asia is a correct you know, definition for uh, you know, consideration of the region. Can we Even ask Kamala Siddiqui to respond yeah. to that, please? Yes. I think uh, it is uh, very uh, important for Afghanistan to be part of uh, South and South Asia uh, because uh, in, in Afghan as you know that the security is a big uh, issue in Afghanistan, but if we uh, encourage people to come and invest and we uh, come to the region and invest, uh, and create more job for people and uh, bring some more uh, safety of life of the people. Uh, we will bring some change in security in Afghanistan. In this case, it is uh, very important for us to be part of the both uh, Central Asia and uh, South Asia. You can do both. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, getting back to the dispute resolution issue, um, uh, my experience is to use the International Arbitration Association, because the issue of a, a bias of a local uh, country's uh, judicial system is common. Um, so uh, in international business agreements, I'm used to seeing um, the International Arbitration Association being used. And I wonder if that might be a solution for uh, Uzbekistan, as well as all the countries uh, in Kemkot. Mr. Siyama, would you comment? Yes, on actually, I would like to uh, answer the previous question about Af it's good for Afghanistan to be part of the CIS or the South Asia. From my point of view, Afghanistan, as we have a friendship bridge, you know, between Uzbekistan and Afghanistan, which is located in uh, uh, Hyderabad border, I can say that Afghanistan could be acting, and it is, a friendship bridge between Central Asia and the South Asia. Yeah. And we have to consider this one as this friendship bridge, so could be the friend of South Asia and the Central Asia. But the CIS countries has to consider Afghanistan as a critical development success factor of the CIS region in order to invest in a long-term basis, which is for the benefit of the CIS as well as Afghanistan and the Mr. South Asia. Mr. Akbar, if you want to comment on, on yes. the arbitration yes. issue. 
Uh, we have this example, and we've tried to implement it within the Astana International Financial Center, where we tried to implement uh, British common law and to, to create a common uh, playing ground for the all investors, because 80% of the business is being done by British common law uh, in terms of the, the investment. So if you'd like to invest, please address to the Astana International Financial Center. They can, uh, the guide can guideline you within the investment policies in Central Asia at the same time. Speaking about the, the Central Asia as a, as a region, uh, Professor Talipov, we have been discussing this issue for a long time, and uh, there are many uh, opinions on whether Central Asia is actually as a is real region or not. And uh, there is a big question, how central is Central Asia? Are we, are we too kind of uh, over, overestimating the, the, the role of Central Asia in the, in the global relations? So there are different opinions on that, and I believe uh, in, in terms of the, the perception, we still, in, in the, within the five Central Asian republics, believe that or see Afghanistan as a little bit different from, uh, from Central Asia in terms of the geography and, uh, and, and as a body. But at the same time, I think in the long term and uh, maybe medium term perspective, within the promotion of business, like medium and uh, small scale of business, we can kind of show the, the case that it's possible to work together and there is a, a great opportunity. Unless this is being done, uh, it's very difficult to say that Afghanistan can be the part of Central Asia in, 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 this, in this respect. Thank you. The, just note that your first president frequently referred to Afghanistan as part of Central Asia. But I'm, I wonder, if Mr. Mustafayev, if you'd be so kind as to comment on the use of ar international arbitration to solve these intra-regional trade dis disputes if they arise. Not an economist, but I uh, fully agree with my colleague, and I have, uh, I have a briefly uh, comment to the question of uh, Mr. Uh, Talipov. Uh, why we consider the, uh, began consider uh, Afghanistan as a part of our region? Well, I mentioned uh, several times that uh, because of uh, sustainable development of Central Asia and especially Uzbekistan is directly connected with the uh, situation of Afghanistan. And you know that uh, all our projects, economic and huge economic projects and infrastructure projects, and the realizing of them is directly connected with Afghanistan. And also the uh, committed uh, the principle of indivisibility, of security, uh, we have uh, to know that the uh, prospects of uh, development of situation in Afghanistan uh, is, uh, have negative influence to also to our region. Thank you. If we are looking for present time, after collapse of Soviet Union, of course something is strange how we're discussing Afghanistan Central Asia, but we should be look to Asian time before Soviet time. Afghanistan particularly was part of Central Asian countries. By cultural, trade, languages, everything is was same. But during the Soviet time, it was isolated. And all five Central Asian countries hasn't any kind of possibility. It was limited, limited communication between Central Asia and Afghanistan. This is the reason. I wonder if we could call on Senator Safarov to comment on this issue. Thank you, Brad, for inviting me to uh, contribute. First of all, I think that <clears throat> there is classic definition of Central Asia done by Alexander von Humboldt in his uh, classic book. And Afghanistan is included too, as a part of Central Asia. And uh, it's um, done due to the geographical reasons, chain of mountains. By the way, a river is not something dividing us. A river is something with uniting. uniting us. It's always. It's a basin of Amu Darya, uh, and uh, that's why it's an uh, artificial border, as Minister said, created during the Russian and then Soviet rule. It was artificial. And after all, ethnically, millions of Uzbek, Tajiks, Turkmans, uh, there are, um, you, uh, there, that's our joint um, uh, asset. So we have an um, uh, ethnic unity some, uh, to some extent. And then uh, it, it was no, not accident that Alexander von Gumbel included at least the 
northern part of Afghanistan to Central Asia. But we should admit that Afghanistan is unique. And uh, it's a thousand part, perhaps, again, um, geographically, ethnically, is maybe closer to the southern Asia, to subcontinent. There's nothing wrong with that. Let's consider that it's a part of the both, Central Asia and subcontinent. Uh, the point is, practical implication of our theoretical considerations. The point is that Afghanistan is uh, essential for the trends developing in huge macro region. Today, in the age of globalization, perhaps it's uh, more important to have a broader picture of the region and uh, to look maybe strategically about the access of Central Asia to us towards the, the South Asia, and I think that Afghanistan might play a crucial role in it, and it's our uh, joint aspiration and goal. Uh, today, we're uh, witnessing unfolding process of reshaping the geopolitical and geoeconomic map of the region, and if, and I'm sure that it will take place, the railroad connecting um, Central Asian rail railroads via Afghanistan will come to Charbahar, to Bandar Abbas, to Gwadar, even more important. It will be another uh, era of our joint partnership. And I fully agree uh, with the uh, statement that, uh, done by Mr. Mustafaev that uh, it's very important to know that all the common challenges we will have originated in Afghanistan requires to consider as a part of regional processes. And it, uh, let's say, demand some new approach. Summing up, I'm sure that uh, today it's time to uh, reconsider our view to Afghanistan. It must be considered as a, not neighbor, but organic part of Central Asia. This is approach of Uzbekistan. And uh, we think that without Afghanistan, we cannot envision sustainable, long-term development of Central Asia. Afghanistan creates huge, promising opportunities for Central Asian development, uh, transportation, uh, trade, uh, and it's a real hub. And after all, we think that only this approach, incorporating Afghanistan to Central Asian process, will be the best way to bring peace to this uh, country. Thank you, Fred. Thank you very much. Further? Is that a question? Comments? Yes, sir. As a person who's, you know, interact with the government of Afghanistan and uh, a person who's uh, working with investment and all that, uh, can you tell us, I mean, is there anything being done in Afghanistan and Afghan government that to, uh, I know, uh, attracting investment is not easy, but at least uh, uh, in the field, uh, what's being done to, uh, to guarantee their investments uh, in current uh, year or the years coming? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Actually, uh, this is a concern which most of the investors, when it comes about the topic of investing in Afghanistan, they do uh, come up with this question that, is it safe to come in Afghanistan and invest? Is there any assurance on the ground for the investors to come and invest in Afghanistan? My answer is that it's a matter of being in the box and out of the box. And if you ask the question that, have you ever been to Afghanistan yourself? The answer is no. So what I'm suggesting that if you want to see the real picture of Afghanistan, come please be in the box, then you have to do a judgment. Being out of the box, unfortunately, Afghanistan is still like a blended spot. But being in the box, there are so many changes which has happened for the past one and a half decades. There are millions of people doing business in Afghanistan. And I give you one of the examples, for example, we have got around eight to 10 flights from Dubai to Kabul on a day-to-day basis, coming and going. And if you travel between Dubai and Kabul, you can see a lot of the foreign faces. And most of them, they are working in the companies, in the foreign companies, in the local companies, or they are investors. Another part is about the risk taking. As an investor, as an entrepreneur, 
always, whenever you go to any specific countries to invest over there, so you have to take a little, uh, a, a specific level of the, 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 the risk. Any step is involving those risk takings. But for us in this region, it is much safer for us in order to invest in our region before going to the other regions because we have a shared culture, we have a shared knowledge, we have a shared um, uh, interests, and we know uh, the area much better can, considering to the other regions, which is South Asia or the Middle East or the Europe or America or other parts of the world. In terms of Afghanistan also, so many things has been done. There were so many policy reforms has been done for the last four years. There are so many new laws has been reformed, specifically the mining laws, which we have got huge potentials in terms of attracting investments into the minerals and mines. Recently, 33 projects of the small and medium-sized mining project has been announced by the Ministry of Mines and Petroleum and is ready for investments. Uh, plus, the private sector supporting institutions like the International Chamber of Commerce, the Afghanistan National Chamber of Commerce, the U.S. government, the USAID, the World Bank, and so many other institutions are there in Afghanistan and they're supporting and promoting the trade investments and supporting and promoting the uh, investments in the country in order to create jobs and to uh, uh, reduce poverty and bring in more stability. Uh, actually, uh, you know that when it comes about these security challenges, to be honest, it is not safe to invest in all parts of Afghanistan because some uh, parts of the country geography is being still controlled by the insurgent groups, by the Taliban. But it doesn't mean that Afghanistan is not safe to invest. For example, come and invest in Kabul, come and invest in Mazar in the north, come and invest in uh, Herat in the west, come and invest in the central Kandahar. There is no security concerns. And this suicide bombing, it's happening in Paris, it's happening in Brussels, it's happening in London as well, sometimes. But it's not a day-to-day -day, uh, uh, accidents or attacks which is happening. And I've got, got a question from you. Have you ever been in Afghanistan yourself? Let's ask that for the whole group. Yeah, Those who, of you who have who been in Afghanistan Afghans, so far? How many of you have been How there? many of you have been over there, yeah? That's a good question. <laughs> See, still a few. <laughs> yeah. And, and how many that, of you doctors? who are not Uzbeks are in Tashkent for the first time? <laughs> uh, Dr. Starr, actually we were discussing last night with my colleagues that who are my friends and who are the fellow in the Kamka. And I suggested to them that please request that the, one of the forums of the Kamka should be conducted in Afghanistan. The 2020 is going to be in Armenia, but the 2021 should be happening in Afghanistan. That we have to get the people. Where should it take happen? Take them. Bamiyan. We discuss about the location as well. Bamiyan. Yeah, Bamiyan is, cool. Bamiyan is the, the best place, yeah. <laughs> well, yes, please. Uh, one important thing is that there is a lot of uh, uh, Turkish company, Chinese, and uh, from different countries, they came and they invest uh, a lot of, uh, uh, they invest uh, a big, for a big project in, in Kabul. But the good chance is that you have to find a good partner in Afghanistan. Um, if you want to uh, implement a project in Ghor, in one of the four provinces of Afghanistan, it's difficult for me and for Ziyar Mal also to know that area. But, but it's very easy to find a business partner in Afghanistan. Then those people know the different area of the Afghanistan. And most of the biggest project now uh, implemented by Afghan company, not an international company. But they are a business partner with a different company. Thank you very much. Any final quick comments from yes? Uh, speaking Let's about go. speaking about opportunities in investing into Afghanistan, if there is some kind of security concerns, I, I believe that one of the options might be uh, uh, in kind of uh, exploring the the startup, like I mean in the digital sphere, because if you take into account that Afghanistan the, uh, there is a very young population and uh, uh, they are quite. Uh, they're using the media and the social apps uh, kind of quite, ex instant, quite actively. So I believe that there is a growing interest in, within the Central Asian region investing into the kind of uh, digital, digitalization and uh, uh, using the internet. So I believe that one of the options that can bring together the young generation of Afghanistan and Central Asian countries is to bring up uh, uh, kind of a hub where it can work on the online investment or bring, uh, you, providing the services to the people through the different kind of applications, et cetera. So digitalization is one of the interesting, interesting trends that can be utilized in the future. We're out of time, I regret to say, but let me just offer a quick observation. This question, where does Afghanistan in the world 
uh, fit in the world. Uh, this we're really talking, as Senator Safaev said, ab ab about about an issue that arose with the rise of the Soviet Union and its or the Russian Empire, uh, which isolated, which made that made the Amudarya into a hard border rather than, rather than a link as it had always been. It, you could go from, regarding transport, you could go from India all the way to the Caucasus via the Balkan and the Amudarya, which was an international river and it connected right up to the, uh, to the Aral Sea and vi finally in the Caspian and you could go to Europe this way. This is, you've always had this the, this role in, in the big region as well as in the immediate Central Asian region. That, that, and what's happening, little by little, it seems to me, is that, that it's returning to this great role it, 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 after a period of deformation, you might say. And th this is happening, uh, uh, yes, of course, it's being led by the field of transport, but it's also happening in the world of business and, 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 and economic relations. And all the institutes of strategic studies in the region, including in Kabul, have recognized this and are working very energetically toward this end. It's very interesting. It obviously is looking forward. You know, the, there, there may well be a basis for saying what you said, uh, uh, Farhad, but uh, looking backward, but that doesn't mean looking, f looking forward. And uh, th let me say a final, final observation. It's okay that there are differences. The differences within Central Asia are enormous. And language, geography, look at some of the highest mountains in the world, some of the biggest deserts and, and, and steppes. Uh, look in ethnicity, language. But, but over the thousands of years, these, these have brought people together because they've had to interact and work together in order to function as a center of world economy, which it certainly was. So this is, this is okay, and by the way, the differences among these countries are far, far less than, for example, the differences among the booming South ASEAN members. I mean, my God, they have different, fundamentally different religions. They're enormously different in scale. They, they, they have totally different political systems ranging from straight communist to total, total free markets. And they work extremely well together. So we, it seems to me we shouldn't approach this with some wooden uh, precepts and, and we, should, we should be open-minded looking forward. But that requires that we know what we're talking about. And one of the amazing things is how little data there is regularly available on trade and investment on a regional basis. I don't mean the big region, South Asia, CIS. I'm talking about the immediate Central Asian region, the Kamka region. Uh, you do what you count. And no government in this region is systematically monitoring these intra-regional trades, investments, and so on. It's a great prospect, Bakhtiar, for, for a, an annual report that is done collectively uh, to watch the growth. Where is it happening? Where isn't it happening? If it isn't happening, what, what, what should be done about it? In other words, we're all talking about something about which we know surprisingly little. And, and one of the tasks might be for all of us to focus more on, on, on hard information so we know year by year what's happening, what's not happening, what needs to be done, what are the problems, how can they be addressed. I would submit after these very, very interesting reports from very, very expert people, I would submit that there's something real going on here. And the more we know about it, the closer we follow it, the more likely it is to be developed further and faster and more successfully. So thank you all very, very much on our panel. Thank you.